Don't just live for tomorrow Or just live for yesterday Just be glad for all you have that's in today And though you've come through many obstacles Hey everyone, Connie here, and welcome to my blind reaction to Total Drama, The Redonkulous Race, Episode 3. So yeah, this has been pretty good so far. Like, actually really good. Um, like I had mentioned in the previous reactions and all, like, I watched the, the other Total Drama series, like, when they were first airing here in America. Um, and I was always, like, uh, I, I was always a fan of them. Like... I, I remember the earlier seasons a lot more than the later ones. Um, I think just because I've seen them a little more. I, I've seen the first couple seasons like uh, more times than the later ones. Um, and I think the later ones just weren't as memorable for me just in general. But I, I, I always enjoyed the series. It's just I kind of lost interest after a while. I kind of moved on to other things, I guess you could say. Um, but... I'm very glad to have gotten back into this with this uh, this iteration, which, again, I'd never seen. Um, and I don't think I've talked about this too much uh, in the first two videos, um, but there is a reboot coming, uh, sort of. Uh, I don't know if it's actually a reboot or not, um, or if it's actually a continuation, but there's a new Total Drama Island coming, and it's specifically called Total Drama Island. It has an entirely new cast of contestants, but both uh, Chef and uh, Chris McLean will be back. And that's pretty interesting. Um, I don't know when it's set to come out. I don't know if there is a set date yet, but there is like the, the image of the cast shared and everything. And yeah, I think they were all completely new. And that means this could be a continuation. This could be like a next generation of Total Drama Island. Which begs a lot of questions like how did Chris get out of jail? But, <laughs> um, and how could he, you know, do this again? But I'm, I'm very much interested. Um, after enjoying this series so far, I'm very interested to see that one when it comes out. Um, granted, I have only seen two episodes out of 20-something for this, uh, for this season, this series, this spinoff, whatever the fuck you want to call it. Um, but I, yeah, I'm enjoying the concept. I, lo I like the idea of changing up, like, what kind of game it is. I mean, it's kind of similar to World Tour, I, I, I think, but it's also its own thing and, and clearly is shown that way. Um... And, and while obviously I don't like every team, while some teams I find absolutely despisable, or some teams like I find one of the people in it despisable or whatnot, it's like I think that's kind of the idea. Like with a show like this, some of the characters are designed to be unlikable. That's just how it is, and there's a, and there's characters who are going to be a little more likable. Um, like, it, it's, and it's very obvious, too. It's not like it's trying to hide it. It's not like it's being subtle. Like, obviously, the girl who's crushing on her best friend and everything, it's like, yeah, you're supposed to like her. Like, that's very obvious. She is super likable. She's super just charming and everything. It's like, you're supposed to like her. That's how her character was made and written. But, like, the one cop, specifically the one cop who's a complete asshole to the other... And on top of that, you know, showed the racism and everything. It's like, yeah, you're supposed to hate her. And then there's other characters it's just kind of, like, mixed on right now. Because I'm not sure, like, what the intent behind their, their characters is yet. Because they haven't done much, like the goths. It, it's like... There's not really enough information to form a thought on them yet. I like them just because of their designs. And that's all I have to go off of right now. Um, and then, there, then there's teams where it's like, I can see people either liking them or hating them. I, I, I feel like they were made to be more neutral so that it just depends on the person. Such as the gym couple. 
uh, being excessively into each other and, and talking about like gym stuff and whatnot. I can see how some people would find them annoying, but I can also see how some people would find them kind of cute. And I'm kind of in the middle with that. Uh, and the scientists or the vegan chicks, like I can see them being seen either way as well. Um, but then there's like obvious ones again, like the, the twin brothers who are very accident prone and everything. It's like, yeah, you're supposed to feel bad for them. That's clearly the intent that they're going with with the writing. So it's like there, there's some characters who are very much intended to be eliciting a very specific reaction from the viewers, and some characters who are being played as more of a middle ground so you can form your own opinions on them. And I like that. I like that there there is both. There are characters that are just outright hateable, there are characters outright likable, and then there's characters it just depends on the person watching. I think that's the right move to do. And I think they've kind of done that with every... Um, with every season of this series. Like in the original Total Drama Island and everything, it's like Heather was clearly made to be unlikable. She was a bitch. But then you had someone like Owen, who in that season is like, yeah, he's a little weird, a little gross maybe, but he's super kind and gentle and caring, and he's a good person. He's so likable. And it's like it just... And obviously Lashana from season one it's like she was the best like <laughs> at least one of the best she was one of my favorites for sure um it's just certain characters are going to be written to be likable some are going to be written to be unlikable and even the unlikable ones will always have their fans there will always be fans of pretty much any of these characters um but for me i'm just kind of seeing it as I see it right now. And that might change, and characters might change. They might have more depth added to them as the series goes along. And that's okay. So last time, we finished off our first leg of the race, and we got our first elimination. The last team to make it was the LARPers. And as I said last time, I'm, I, I kind of am okay with them going because they were... a. I feel like their placement in this competition was a little detrimental to themselves and others. They were not really fitting for a competition like this. Um, and it's nothing against LARPers, obviously, but again, real life LARPers are not like this. <laughs> they are not this obsessive and this weird and like they're, they're not going to be like acting like they have to be LARPing at all times. And that everything in life can be solved with dragon coin or fireballs or shit. It's like, it, they were, uh, again, as I've stated before, obvious exaggerations with the character archetypes and everything. Which is fine for the comedy of the show. But again, it's like, it, 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 like thinking about it, they were not going to work in this competition. There, there was really no way to make that work continuing on. So I, I agree with the choice to get uh, rid of them quickly. Um, but from there, we'll kind of see. There were some other teams who were weak links, and even, even the Goths really didn't make it far, um, or rather didn't do well um, in the first leg of the race. But there were also teams that did extremely well. Um, the winning team were the best friends uh, with the girl who is massively crushing on on the boy her best friend um despite him having a girlfriend um <laughs> kind of makes me think of uh jeffica with centaur world and all which is just a funny thing to think about but um i, <laughs> I was just imagining her like getting upset at his girlfriend like that i, I can't remember what his girlfriend's name was but it's like you kind of want to cheer for her too because you kind of want it to happen because you think it's kind of cute and you think she's kind of cute and you just don't want to see her sad and everything but at the same time you know it's like that's kind of rude wanting him to just break up with his girlfriend just to appease her um because he him and his girlfriend might like be in real good love with each other so yeah <laughs> um but either way, 
Either way, uh, they won last time. They they were the first team, and their performance is extremely good. Like they work extremely well together, which was very much stated uh, because they are best friends and they've known each other for so long. So yeah, they would know how to work with each other. Um, but now we continue on and I don't know what to expect. I don't know what we're going to do next. I don't know what the next leg of the race is going to be like or what challenges and everything we're going to have, but I'm excited. I I'm actually, again, really enjoying this. Um, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Um, so we're going to get this started and find out what episode three has in store for us. When the screen fades to black, pause this redirect and go to the description below. Follow the link to the reaction, and after you watch it, come back here to the redirect and resume play. Because after it fades to black and then fades back in, everything from that point forward will be my afterthoughts and will contain spoilers to the episode. So, that being said, thank you so much for tuning in, and I will see you at the reaction. And we are back, and we will begin with spoilers in 3, 2, 1, now. Okay, so this one uh, was a little quicker than the last. Um, the last challenge, the last leg of the race, went by a lot slower. Um, but again, I think in terms of like writing and pacing of the show and everything, that was done because they wanted the first challenge and all for the first two episodes to be kind of like this two-part premiere of sorts. So they extended it a little bit, made it a little longer. Well, this one was definitely a little shorter. So, in this leg of the race, they had to go to Paris. Um, which uh, is fun. So they head to the airport. Uh, again, they all come in like different groups and there's three flights once again. So they all head in. And they once they get to Paris, they have to sketch their partners. The person who didn't eat the stew last time has to sketch the person who did. Um, and basically they have to keep doing so until this uh, French artist who's there gives them the thumbs up telling them that they're okay to move on. Afterwards they head into the catacombs uh, to continue on where they find a wheel of cheese to row on to the next stage. Once they reach uh, the docks, they have to bring their cheese up to the safe zone. And yeah, it's just a matter of time as to when they get there. Uh, so this time we had our next elimination. Uh, again, just a lot quicker than with the first challenge. And it was a real neck in neck uh, kind of uh, moment there, or a real photo finish. Because uh, uh, Owen and, uh, oh God, what is his name? They had to wait for 20 minutes while all the other teams were passing them by because they had a penalty due to Owen eating the cheese and everything. So because of that, the t all the other teams were able to catch up and it was between them and the tennis pros. The tennis pros ended up going home because one of them didn't have his feet all the way in the circle. It's as simple as that, I guess. So, in the end, the tennis pros, even though they started to get along a lot more in this episode, um, they went home. There were some teams that just were not focused on much at all in this one. The father and son duo, for example. Um, on top of the, uh, the stepbrothers. Like, I don't think the stepbrothers were shown much at all in this one. Um... This allowed us to focus on some of the other teams and give them a little more uh, attention than we had before. Um, the sisters were given a little more attention. Um, and again, the tennis pros obviously were given a lot more. Um, and it just allowed even the goths to have some time to shine, getting them to uh, have moments of actually speaking. At least the guy got to speak. And, and, there, and the line says, like, like fawning over the catacombs and then, like, this could be, like, a, a camp for kids and whatnot is, like, that's, that's funny. 
Uh, and it's like their personalities are basically what I expected from from the characters, of course, just going into the, you know, stereotypes, because that's what the show kind of makes the jokes around. Um, but it's like, yeah, it's like, I, I like them. <laughs> it, it, it's kind of what I expected and everything, so I'm good with this. Um, and yeah, it's, uh, it's still proving good. Uh, this is still proving to be a very good, enjoyable um, series. I'm just, I'm enjoying the characters. I'm liking the jokes. I just really enjoy this. Uh, there's not too much else to say. Uh, I like the different challenges to this time. Drawing a character, like traversing the catacombs, uh, the cheese wheels and everything. There are some, there are some fun jokes. Some of the characters were fun and everything. Um... And this uh, challenge's winners were the cop duo, we found out. Um, which will, I guess, give them a small advantage in the next round. Nothing like super major, I guess, but it's something, you know. Um, but yeah, I, 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 I'm just enjoying this. I'm just vibing with this series right now. It's, it's fun. It's enjoyable. So tell me in the comments below, what did you think of this episode of Total Drama, The Redonkulous Race? And for now, I'm Connie and I'm signing off. See y'all next time.